Shape version 5 starts with the new desktop where you have access to all the modules where your operations and modeling will happen and uh, those are also reflected at the top toolbar where you can select them and you can customize your toolbar by simply dragging and dropping the different module icons on the, the toolbox on the toolbar so it doesn't get too cluttered and you can move delete them from there anytime there's a set of buttons for operations commands and the usual file operations of loading and creating new files project files there are recent projects that you have been working on already listed there so you have quick access to them and then there are information modules where different sorts of information can be handled and there's the news where you have uh, quick access to the latest results that have been obtained with shape or important information on the software itself let's start by creating a new project clicking on the new button then you select a directory uh, but first let's uh, set a home directory in the shape configuration where you select uh, your working directory and click OK and that will be saved for the future now let's start a new project by going to the 3D module here you have uh, four different views interactive view ports with the render viewport at the bottom right which is what will produce your final images at the top you have a selection of primitive objects like spheres toruses and so on from which you start building your model you click on one of them then click on the viewport and uh, click again to build and drag out your first object these are listed in the objects tree at the right and you can add new objects to them in the same way those are listed then in this uh, object tree where you can select them and uh, delete them copy them create new folders move them up and down okay you let's select the the original sphere should give it a sensible name in case your objects become very complicated you can change the display color something that uh, is closer to what you would observe maybe uh, then you go to the modifiers tab this is the most important tab where you all your operations will happen on the object and uh, let's start with uh, adding a new modifier click on the plus sign and modifier list appears which is ordered in alphabetical order select a shell modifier to give it some shell like structure click on the properties and set a, a better value let's say uh, 10 maybe that's too much 5 is not enough 7 so you go around and play with the uh, the values until you are happy we don't need the temperature for this simple model so we can delete that at a uh, let's see no let's first uh, see what how this renders okay we go back to the rendering module and then click the shape button the render button and uh, there you go there is your first render of our object you can click on these different buttons at the top to get different ways of looking at it and uh, in the image tab on the right you can uh, or on in the camera uh, tab on the right you can change the viewing direction re-render and your inclination angle changes and you can see better see that there is a torus in there let's go back to 3d and uh, make something more interesting let's give it a name the torus change a bit of a color to make it 
more distinguished from the uh, sphere and then go to the uh, modifiers and add a squeeze modifier for the sphere and that has a default setting to make it a bipolar which quite nicely fits right now and then we go to the torus, select the torus and change its radius a little bit, the outer radius to make it a bit smaller okay and uh, now you can go to this free from free form view oops there's another object up here we because we still in create mode we delete this and then go to click on the left in the camera tab to change the orientation here you can uh, look at different view views in the same viewport now we can rotate this in the freeform uh, viewport in the others you cannot rotate it except in the render view of course you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel and then let's re-render to look at it from a different perspective okay here's the first bipolar with the torus around it and uh, let's change the seeing a bit so it blurs the Im which is a blurring on the on the image mimicking observational seeing and you don't see anything on the right which is the position velocity diagram position velocity diagram is switched on so there's something missing we are missing velocity our object has no velocity yet so we at a velocity modifier which is at the bottom of the list because of the alphabetical ordering and change the magnitude click on the edit magnitude button where a dialog appears to set our velocity functions right now there's a quick function and with a few parameters which we can change and uh, we have a linear increase with distance let's increase it by a factor of five and uh, make sure that we have radial radial velocity vectors okay and then render again here's our position velocity diagram it's a bit weak uh, here's panel to change that but I think it is because of the lacking velocity field in the torus so let's add copy that uh, velocity field with the copy button there's a copy paste pair of buttons so copy it and paste it on the torus select the torus and paste it as a copy not an instance a copy can be modified independently of the original one and uh, let's go back and render there you go there's our position velocity diagram which includes both objects. Now we can have different ways of looking at it. Red, blue, blue and red shifted. Doppler shift representation is a more distinct color representation of the Doppler effect which we can customize on by clicking on this little wrench and render again. This changes the range for the red and blue Doppler effect. Now we can change the inclination in the camera tab. Render again by clicking on Control S. And here's our different view. Let's change it again to a more higher inclination. Now we're looking almost uh, axis along the axis. And the PV diagram changes accordingly. Let's make 
the colors more distinct also in the PV diagram render again now should be more distinction between a red and blue there you go and our uh, spectroscopic slit is a bit too long ranges higher than the our view so let's change that um, what is it let's have a look at the image our range is 60 something let's make it a round number so our view changes a little bit go back to the group where we have our slit parameters set it to 80 which covers the whole object now re-render and now you have a clean image and uh, position velocity diagram now to save these results we can click on the little save button at the top of each image and select the directory give it a name where it is very important to put the right uh, a suitable ending PNG is very good you could have others JPEG or RAW which keeps full image information without compression and uh, but for most things PNG is quite good now this image has been saved you could now want to look at a different slit position drag the slip slit over and your position velocity diagram changes do this again and uh, with the save slit button in the group tap on our slip becomes part of the image now and can be saved with the image okay that is